Welcome to the end of the unit. Uh, following this lesson are a couple of days of review, and then we test. So the last topic that we talk about in our fifth unit together is how populations really grow, how rumors really spread. Uh, we get to talk in today's lesson, a lesson that is specifically a BC lesson. AB students don't talk about this. We talk about logistic growth. Logistic growth uh, comes from a differential equation. Uh, that's an equation with a derivative in it. There's the derivative. In logistic growth, the differential equation is derivative of population with respect to time is equal to some constant times the population times the difference between the population and some number m. That is logistic growth. So if I can, let's talk about how that works. K is generally some positive number. Logistic growth has a horizontal asymptote up here at that value m. There's some initial population and then that population grows really quickly, almost exponentially, and then inexplicably that growth slows down. In fact, it slows down right about there, and we'll talk about why uh, in the middle of the lesson. So the population grows, it appears exponentially early on, but then what happens is that the rate of growth slows uh, to a place where we never exceed M. Now, how does that work? Well, when population is equal to M, derivative is zero. That's a horizontal asymptote. So you would expect a horizontal asymptote when the population was equal to M. Similarly, if K were negative, if K were negative, you would get growth heading this way and it would head that way because when population is zero there is also a horizontal asymptote. Generally speaking K is positive for logistic growth and so you have that upward thing. Uh, this is also how uh, rumors spread. Uh, initially very few people know the rumor but then as more people know the rumor, more people spread the rumor. And so, ooh, ooh, I'll use magic pen to demonstrate this. Initially, very few people know the rumor. And so it doesn't spread very quickly. And then more people know the rumor, so more people can spread the rumor. And at about the point where half the people know the rumor and half the people don't, then it's really flying. And then eventually, fewer and fewer people don't know, and so the rate of growth slows down. Populations grow in the same way. There are initially very few people, uh, and so there are fewer people to make people. And then ultimately, the population growth rate has to slow down, and it has to slow down because the environment can only carry so many people, so many bunnies, so many deer, and so just for lack of resources, uh, the population is not allowed to grow exponentially. Let me show you what I mean. Let the growth rate for a population of tigers be dpdt is 0.006p, 0 0.006 is the k, times 200 minus p, 200 is m. t is in years, p of 0 is 8, which means initially there are 8 tigers released into this. Find the carrying capacity of the environment. So we imagine that there is some upward growth toward a horizontal asymptote. Where will that horizontal asymptote be? That horizontal asymptote will happen where that factor is zero. And that factor is zero when population is 200. The carrying capacity 
of the environment is 200 tigers? That is a quick, easy, short answer question. You can say outright carrying capacity has to be 200 because dpdt equals zero at time equals zero. At, no, at population equals zero or population equals 200, we choose the larger of those two, population capacity 200. Part B, find the population when the population is growing the fastest. Well, how do we know when the population is growing the fastest? We want DPDT to be a maximum. How do we get DPDT to be a maximum? We take the second derivative of population, set it equal to zero, and solve. So the product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. And you set that equal to 0. And if you were to solve that in the privacy of your own home, you would factor out a 0 .006 dpdt, and you would get a beautiful linear equation that turns out to give you p is 100. This almost makes sense. Again, if we're talking about rumors spreading, the rumor will spread the fastest when the number of people who know equals the number of people who don't know. That's when the thing is really flying. Um, if a disease is going to spread, how will a disease spread the fastest when the number of people who have the disease equals the number of people who don't? Uh, that's your, your growth rate. C, find the rate of change in the population when the population is growing the fastest. Well, rate of change, that's DPDT. When the population is growing the fastest, population is 100, so... 0 0.006 p 200 minus p and that happens to be 60 tigers per year population measured in tigers time measured in years and now for the fun part find an expression for p find an expression for p see the trick is I need a way to solve this. I need a way to solve that differential equation. Oh, you lousy. There. It is a separable differential equation. It's separable. Your dp stuff ends up on the left side. Your dt stuff ends up on the right side. So the p and the 200 minus p have to come to the left. Your dt has to head to the right. And so you ask yourself, self, how do I integrate those sides? Well, the right side is easy. The integral of a number is number times variable plus a constant. That's easy. The integral on the left side is significantly more difficult, but that's a fraction with a factorable denominator. And since that's a fraction with a factorable denominator, I hear three of you saying, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. That's right. That's three of you. You can set up a partial fraction decomposition. You can do that. You can set up a partial fraction decomposition. Oh, oh, it all comes together. And so what ends up happening is that you get 1 over 200 for both of them, except that B is negative. 
and you can figure that out in the privacy of your own home, which, as we've always said, is your own privates. So here we go. I'm going to bring that 200 over to the right side. Arbitrary constant is irrelevant here. Um, I'll call that a C1 so that you don't feel bad that that's a C there. Uh, on the left side, the integral of 1 over P is natural log P. The integral of 1 over 200 minus P, oh, rats, that's a plus. The integral of 1 over 200 minus P is natural log of 200 minus P times negative 1. So there's your minus happening right there. So what do I want? I want to take advantage of my laws of logarithms. If I'm subtracting logs, that means I'm dividing things. And because I know what's coming, I want to divide them in reverse order. And to divide them in reverse order, I've got to kick a negative to the other side. And you're just going to have to trust me on that, that that is an OK thing to do. Because I know what's coming. I know that in parentheses, I'm going to have 200 over P minus 1. I'll give you a moment to make sure your fraction operations are good with that. And so what do I want? I want P by itself. To get P by itself, I've got to exponentiate both sides. Right? And so 200 divided by P is 1 plus e to the negative 1.2t minus c. Well, how are we going to figure that thing out? Well, we're going to come over in a scrap land. Scrap land, scrap land. And in scrap land, we're going to say, wait a second. When time was zero, there were eight tigers. And so that means that 200 divided by eight is equal to one plus e to the negative 1.2 times zero minus c. And you can figure out what that means. It means that negative c is the natural log of 24. And since negative c is the natural log of 24, there it is. And I know how that goes. That means that 200 over p is 1 plus 24 e to the negative 1.2t. E to the ln of 24 is 24. That's a product. And so we're going to take reciprocals on both sides. P over 200 is 1 over that, and we'll bring the 200 up. And we get an expression for P in terms of T. One year, way, way back, about 25 years ago, the College Board gave this D part as a nine-point question. Uh, they would not do that anymore to you. I haven't, a I haven't seen it in 25 years where they've asked you to derive the logistic growth equation. But there isn't anything in here that you can't do. You can do partial fraction decomp. You can take integrals of 1 over p and 1 over 200 minus p. You can use your laws of logarithms. You can end up there. I mean, it's a legit fair game thing uh, in general. In general, if you see k, p, m minus p, you know that the population is whatever the carrying capacity is over 1 plus a e to the negative m, k, t. You know that. Um, a is determined by the initial condition. So you'd have to know how many tigers there were originally. M is the carrying capacity. K is a growth constant. Uh, let's make sure that this makes sense. M 
was the carrying capacity and m times k 200 times 0 0.006 is that number sitting right there so it would appear that we are consistent with what we're seeing right here uh, one more just to drive the point home think through with me a b and c are going to be really easy think through with me population of puppies grows according to the logistic differential equation there it is there are initially 10 puppies what is the carrying capacity of the environment? What is P when population is growing the fastest? What is the rate of growth when P is growing the fastest? Hit the pause button. Make sure you can answer those three questions. They are bang, bang questions. Okay. You didn't hit the pause button, did you? You're just listening. You're probably driving listening. What is the carrying capacity of the environment? Well, the carrying capacity of the environment, we know that we want... 300 puppies and no more. Why? Because the population growth equals zero when population is zero or when population equals 300. The greater of those is the carrying capacity. Population is 300. What is the population when the population is growing the fastest? That will always happen halfway between the lower horizontal asymptote and the upper horizontal asymptote. And so that happens when the population is 150. That will always happen halfway between. How do we know that? We take a derivative of dp dt with respect to time, set it equal to zero, and solve. What is the rate of growth when the population is growing the fastest? Well, I need dp dt when population is 150, and that's 0 0.002 times 150 times 300 minus 150, and that's 45 puppies per year. That is some serious growth in puppy population. And then what is a good expression for P? Well, we know that P is M over 1 plus AE to the negative MKT. So that's m over 1 plus some number e to the negative m times k. That's 300 times 0 0.002. I'm just going to write it. T. M, k, t. So what's a? a depends on the initial condition. The initial condition is that at time equals zero, there are 10 puppies. So, 10 puppies at 300 over 1 plus a e to the negative mkt, but t is zero. And so that means that 1 plus a is 30, and so a is 29, and we write that 29 right there. Awesome. So if you memorize the general logistic equation, then you can do that really quickly without thinking really hard, unless you're asked to derive it specifically. Uh, I haven't yet seen a question that has asked a student to write the population equation down just as a short answer. And I haven't seen in 25 years where they've asked people to derive it. But it doesn't mean that they won't. And so you ought to be familiar with how it goes, sort of, unless you're a dice rolling kind of a person. Awesome. So that's logistic growth. There it is. I hope that populations of tigers don't keep you awake at night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.